Has your corpse ever needed reviving? I'm Brian Johnson. In this episode of Better Cocktails at Home, we're going to be with the Corpse Survivor number two. Now, Corpse Survivor number two is the most famous of the Corpse Survivor drinks. And I say drinks because there are multiple ones that have different numbers attached to them. This is number two. Um, there are ingredients actually vary pretty widely between the different numbers, between one, two, and three. Uh, but this one's the most famous. And I actually am going to do a variation on it that we most commonly find in uh, bars and uh, most cocktail books. Now it's called the Corpse Reviver because it's meant to revive a corpse, aka if you have a hangover from drinking too much the night before, you drink this in the morning and supposedly it'll help you out. So in Harry Craddock's seminal work, The Savoy Cocktail Book in 1930, he actually wrote about this drink and he commented that four of these taken in swift succession will unrevive the corpse again. And I agree with him that if you drink four of these really quickly, you will probably have problems. Now, why these, this cocktail and its close relatives, uh, the other corpse survivors are intended as a hangover cure as opposed to just other random cocktails. I don't really know why. I mean, it's pretty much just a cocktail. So why these were designated as hangover cures versus other ones, I have no idea. Maybe the person who invented it just like to drink in the mornings. I have no idea. But that said, we're going to make this slight variation on the traditional Corpse Survivor number two. And I really like it, so I hope you do too. And I'll tell you where that variation comes in when we get there. But to start with, we're going to start with using a, uh, a dry gin. And um, it calls for a, a traditional London dry, but I really like this Voyager gin. It's produced in Woodville, Washington. I think it's a really nice gin, and that's what we're using. Three quarters of an ounce of gin. Next up is Swedish Punch. Now this is a liqueur, um, it's out of Sweden, and this is where this, this particular drink I'm making very, varies from the very traditional one and the one you see most commonly. And I found this variation in Trader Vic's 1947 Bartender's Guide, and I think it's really interesting, I like it a lot. You know, normally you'd use Le Blanc, uh, which is a fortified wine, and it's just, it just kind of gives a drink a pretty different profile, flavor profile, than with the Swedish Punch ads. So, uh, I like this one, though, try it. And this is actually, it's a pretty tough ingredient to find, but I think it's worth um, tracking down, and if you really want to make better cocktails at home, I think if you invest in some of these really nice ingredients, it'll be worth it, and for the long run. So we're three quarter of an ounce of Swedish Punch. Now we're gonna do um, Cointreau. And originally this drink was all equal parts, but um, I prefer to cut, use the cut down on the Cointreau just a bit, just to cut the sweetness. So I call, I do half ounce of Cointreau. And the final part of our main ingredients is uh, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Now what I do is I double strain my citrus, so I don't have to do it later, but I don't want any small bits of citrus getting into my cocktail. Now the final ingredient is just a dash of absinthe. And um, when I say a dash, I really do mean a dash. I mean, you're talking very small amount, 
because absinthe is a very very strong um, spirit and so it was really dominated drink very quickly so I'm very careful when I add this and do it very slowly just do a very small amount it doesn't take much some people will put the absinthe in a bar spoon first and then put it in that way if they get too much they can kind of control it but if you're careful you can do it by hand it's not too difficult that's all of our ingredients so we're gonna add ice We add ice last behind our ingredients because we want to control the dilution. And we add it to our shaker and we give it a good shake. About 8 10 seconds, all it really needs. And remember, we're shaking this drink because we're using citrus and we shake cloudy ingredients. And once you've done that, we strain it into our cocktail glass. And this is the corpse fry number two with a slight variation. Now the original corpse fry with the Lille Blanc is a pretty crisp drink. Pretty strong citrus flavors coming through. It has that spice, a little, not a lot, but you know, a little bit. Um, I think it's a really interesting variation on the Course Fire Number Two. I really like it. I think it's a nice change to the cocktail. Really well done. It kind of changes it quite a bit, but I like it a lot, and I highly recommend it. So my question is: Do you? How often do you sub in ingredients in cocktail recipes that you find? Is it? You do it based on if you don't have any ingredients at home, you just try to find something similar, or how do you like to experiment? And that's gonna kind of be curious about. But that's how you make Corpse Survivor number two.